Come Coach on. Charles Lefty Durzell. Coach, how did you, how did you, and everybody basically now calls you Lefty. How did you come up with the nickname Lefty? Well, I got a picture of a guy over here, and I'm going to show you this in a minute, see if you can see. Barney Gill uh, and I were, were water boys. I was in this third grade, and I, see, at Granby High School, where I went to school, you, 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 I went from the first grade to the twelfth grade, the same school. Wow. wow. So I began, I, I used to hang around the football field. Mm -hmm. And the football coach said, hey, boy, you want to be a, a manager? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was a manager from the time I was in the second grade till I started playing in the ninth. I, in fact, I got a high school letter when I was in the fourth grade. You know, I used, <laughs> all the girls used to hug me, you know. Yeah. And, uh, so Barney Gill, was a, he was a manager, too. He ended up being a great player. And... Um, so he started calling me Lefty because I was a little dude hanging around over there and mm -hmm. he started calling me Lefty and that's where it got started. Actually when I went to Duke, the people called me Charlie more mm -hmm. than Lefty. But Lefty, that's where Lefty got started. Mm -hmm. and, and so when you went off, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about your high school basketball career, Coach. Well, I, you know, I started playing when I was in ninth grade, mm -hmm. football, basketball, and baseball, because I'd been a manager for all those teams. You played football too? You, yeah. Uh, all these years that I've known you, I never knew you played football. Yeah, I played in, in, uh, in the ninth grade, I, uh, Old Dominion just played uh, William and Murray, I think it was, in Oyster Bowl. I played mm -hmm. in the first, I didn't play, I sat on the bench when mm -hmm. I was in the ninth grade mm -hmm. in the Oyster Bowl. And then I had a, a mastoid operation on my ear after my ninth grade and I couldn't play anymore. They wouldn't let me play. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, then I started playing basketball and baseball. Mm -hmm. But you know that I, I coached football two years at Granby High School when I was a JV coach and we were undefeated both years. And one year we won scored on. Woo! I was a defensive specialist. In fact I had a, a shop teacher, we block a shot and block a punt every game. Because he used to get out there, you know, and he, he was like eighth grade kids. He was mm -hmm. punting as hard as he could and make them block them. You know, you can't can't get hurt if you do like that. Mm -hmm. So we blocked them punt every day. I should have been a football coach. Hell, a Bear Bryant of, of the Tidewater <laughs> area. That, that, I'm, I'm glad you didn't become a, 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 a football coach then because of the contributions you've made to basketball over the years are, are, are historic in that. And so we, 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 you went to Granby and you must have had oh, yeah, an outstanding year. Then I, then I started year. playing in the ninth grade. Mm -hmm. And in my senior year, we won the state championship. I was the leading scorer in the, in the state tournament. And, um, you know, then I got scholarship from NC State and Duke and, you know, Richmond, Williamsburg, mm -hmm. North mm -hmm. Carolina. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I really wanted, in Tennessee, I really wanted to go to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I was in love with Joyce, my wife, mm -hmm. you know, and they wouldn't let athletes get married in Tennessee, but you can get married in Duke. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons I went to Duke. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I, and I did marry her in my sophomore year when they told me I couldn't play. So, uh -huh. so when you get to Duke, Coach, as a freshman, to walk us through the, your four years at Duke. Well, my first year, we, I played on the freshman team back then. Mm -hmm. And my, my second year, my sophomore year, I was just about going to start, and my ear got infected. I told you I had that mastoid operation. Mm -hmm. So I go up to Duke Hospital and say, you never play basketball again. I said, get out of here. Tell me I can't play basketball. Said, the name was Watts Eagle. I'll never forget his name. And so I said, why? He said, well, because they cut a piece of your skull away. Mm -hmm. And if you get hit in the head, you have a cerebral hemorrhage, mm -hmm. and you can't play. And so... Uh, he wouldn't, in fact, I played in the intramural game with uh, Brad Davis's uncle, Bill mm. uh, Regal, and they caught me and they said, you, you, you can never play in the intramural. Don't even come, we don't want you coming to practice because you're going to get tempted to shoot a ball. So I didn't play my sophomore year. That's when I got married to George. Mm -hmm. And I just came home every weekend. I didn't even go to the games much. And I figured I was never going to play. Mm -hmm. And then the next year, coach said, well, let's go ahead. We'll play and see if. Dr. Eagle stopped you, so I did play. I started the first four games. I was averaging about 11 points. Give me, there's a picture right there. The, the uh, Vanderbilt game, I had 18 points. Next game, I didn't even get in. But I think he said, you know, take it easy on him. Don't let him get hurt or something. I don't know. 
So I, I, you know, I averaged about five points a game for mm -hmm. three, two years. I didn't play for two years, mm -hmm. you know, because I played freshman ball my freshman year. Mm -hmm. So it was a, actually the coach that recruited me, Jerry Gerard, who the coach of the year in, in the ACC is still named after him. He died, see, when I was a freshman. Mm -hmm. And so we had a new coach, Harold Bradley, come in. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I was married. I was the only basketball player mm -hmm. married. And, uh, so I, I enjoyed it. It was a great school and a great, you know, education. There. What did you major in at Duke, Coach? In the, I majored in education. Mm -hmm. I wanted to major in physical education, mm -hmm. but I couldn't because they didn't have a physical education major at Duke. Mm -hmm. So I majored in education with a, you know, I, I was qualified to teach history or Spanish, mm -hmm. <laughs> which when I got to my first coaching job in high school here at Granby, they said, you got to teach either history or Spanish. I don't want to teach either one. I want to be a phys ed teacher. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I did teach history my first year, and it was miserable. So I told them, I'm quitting if I can't, teach, if I can't coach phys ed next year. Mm -hmm. I mean, teach physical education. So they said, okay, go ahead. We'll let you do it. And, that's, mm -hmm. and then I got my master's degree for At William and Mary? In, in physical education. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, and what did you do? You, how did you do that, Coach? Did you continue to coach, or did you just take Yeah, I just went up. I, it took me about three summers. Mm -hmm. I just went up there every day in the summertime for three summers and, and got my master's degree. Mm -hmm. at, what, at what point, Coach, did you decide that you wanted to coach at the college level? Well, I really wanted to coach when I was at Granby. See, I, I, mean, I started out being a JV coach at Granby. Then the head coach left. And, and I took his place for one year. And um, I had an offer to go to uh, Hampton City to interview. Yes. So I went up there and interviewed, but I didn't get the job. Mm -hmm. Then the next year, I went to Newport News High School, which that's where Julie Kahn was, you mm -hmm. know, Julie. And, mm -hmm. and in fact, Newport News has won more state championships than any school in, in the state of Virginia, even mm -hmm. today. And then we had. When I took over, they had won about 17 straight games, and we got the win streak up to 57, which I think Alonzo won 54 straight, mm -hmm. and Moses won about 52 straight. Mm -hmm. So we still got the record for Newport yeah. High School to yeah. of 57 straight wins. Wow. Wow. And in and, and, and a talent-rich uh, 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 basketball area, a lot of people don't realize how... Uh, many great players and great coaches have come out of the Tidewater area over the over the last 75 years. It's it's a, a oh, yeah, it was, you know uh, Bucky Keller, who was mm -hmm. my best player. He only played for me for one year, but you know he uh, Moses Malone broke his scoring record. He mm -hmm. made first team All State in the ninth grade. Mm -hmm. and he went wow. to Virginia Tech and uh, uh, averaged 18 points a game and. So he, he was a great player, mm -hmm. Coach. When you were when you were uh, at, at coaching in high school, who were some of your mentors, the people that that uh, you looked to for advice and, and wisdom? In high school, yeah, at Grand. Well, my high school coach was Donald Griffin, uh -huh. who I, I really, you know, because I had been his manager, uh -huh. so, so you I kind of patterned him. yourself yeah, after him. And my uh, the the football coach had hired me, Bill Story was a guy that, that I really respected. He was great giving pre-game speeches. I was doing World War II. Mm -hmm. And he'd come in there and talk about, you know, guys getting shot and mm -hmm. he knew he played for him. And we're playing Mari today. And we got a win for him, for these guys that just got killed. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, uh, you know, Julie Kahn, I've told you some yeah, stories oh, yeah, about yeah. him. <laughs> he, was, he was a great motivator. I remember you telling me, Coach, that Julie was su such a good motivator that he he could actually bring tears to the players' eyes. Oh yeah, he did. I I heard him. We were playing Hampton in football, and the football coach, and that was a big rival. We could never beat Hampton. Mm -hmm. and of course, we always beat them beat them in basketball, but in football they were. So one time uh, we were playing them over at Hampton. And, Julie's uh, Cowboy Ranger football coach. He said, Julie, can you give him a pep talk for the game, right? So Johnny Palmer, who went to Duke with me and was a great high school coach at Hampton later on, we were in the bathroom listening. And he had, I, we looked at that, and he was crying. All the whole team, and these were tough kids, too, yeah, because yeah. most of them was 
parents worked in the shipyard. Mm -hmm. Like Bucky Keller, this yeah. guy that I was thinking about, his dad was a chipper. Mm -hmm. You know, you do like that with, mm -hmm. with an air hammer. So he had them all crying, he was crying. And so as soon as he left to go out, he came back to Josh, had I do, had I do, had I do. <laughs> we said, you did great, Julie. <laughs> but uh, I tell stories about Julie like, we had a guy who's still living over at Charlie Nutticombe, mm -hmm. who was a great broad jumper himself. He played, not for what college he played track at, but he jumped broad jump. Mm -hmm. So I was over there watching him one day, and Charlie was telling me, look, run down here and take off on your left foot, do your elbows up, and then you get out there. Julie coming out, I, I don't want all that stuff. He said, look, boy, if you don't jump over that stick right there, I'm going to kill you. And then I don't care what foot you take off of or what you do with your elbow. You, the guy went about three feet further than Charlie. And Charlie knew how to broad jump. Yeah. Julie knew how to broad jump. Yeah. He just motivated that way. But he was he was something. And and then how 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 did you uh, transition from uh, from coaching in high school to the Davidson job? What made you interested in the Davidson job, coach? Well, <clears throat> Eddie Cameron, who you know Cameron in North State, mm -hmm. he. He always liked me when I was at Duke for some reason. Mm -hmm. And uh, he called me up one day, he said, they left you. And, uh, you know, I had a good run. We won 57 straight games. Mm -hmm. He said, you want the Davidson job? And I said, um, yeah, yeah, sure. Because Bill Story, the guy I told you the football coach mm -hmm. who hired me the mm -hmm. first, mm -hmm. as the manager, he had gone to Davidson as the football coach. And so I had heard of Davidson, but I knew they weren't very good in basketball. And, so he said, well, I can get you that job. I want you to go down there for an interview. Because Tom Scott, the athletic director, is a good friend of mine. He's, mm -hmm. he's called me and asked me about you. So I went down there and interviewed and got the job. But I got it mostly because of Eddie Cameron. Because mm -hmm. I didn't know Tom Scott. And I Tom went on to be one of the great 80s in, in the history of, of college athletics. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, all I know is all my friends said, left you crazy, man. You stay at Newport News High School and win the state championship every other year, and you gonna go to Davidson. They never had a winning team in the history of the school, which mm -hmm. is not true. Mm -hmm. And um, so they all told me don't go. But as a matter of fact, if I'd have come back to coaching Newport News High School, my salary would have been sixty two hundred, and I took six thousand to go to Davidson. I was gonna ask you what you said. <laughs> Uh, at that at that time, Coach, when you went down to to Davidson uh, and you, you abandoned what was obviously a a, 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 a rich career there at uh, from a standpoint of being able to win consistently consistently, what was it that it was just a gambler nature in you that made you want to go to Davidson, or or you just you just wanted to take that challenge? I don't know why I got into coaching. Probably because I was really disappointed in my playing time and at Duke, mm -hmm. and I, I knew I could play. Mm -hmm. I, even, I came back here in the city league and played against uh, guys from the ACC, and I get uh, a guy from NC State. I forget his name. He was outstanding. I had thirty-seven on him. I mean, I could play. Yeah, you know, and but I didn't get to play much there. So I guess that's kind of why I got interested in coaching, really. Although I've been around mm -hmm. coaching, like I told you, since I was in first grade, second grade. Mm -hmm. What was the most difficult uh, thing about building the, 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 the Davidson program? from? Because basically you had to build it from scratch. Well, I was just confident, you know, uh -huh. that, that I could win. That I was going to, I won in high school and, and um, I just said, I'm going to give me some good players. And Davidson is a great academic school. Mm -hmm. I mean, Davidson at that time, probably does, has had more Rhodes Scholars than any school in the South. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm going to find me five or six great basketball players that want a great education. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of them that I got wanted to go to Ivy League schools, mm -hmm. but they couldn't get a scholarship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I said, why do you want to go to Princeton or... Dartmouth or somewhere like that when you can come here and get a scholarship. And that's really what I sold them on. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was very fortunate to get Fred Hetzel. Who, he, I, get beat, he, I beat Duke out for him mm -hmm. because Duke had already signed five guys. They signed Bill Bradley and 
Tyson and Jeff Mullins and they, I said, Fred, you're going to be the sixth man there on the freshman team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you come here, you're going to make All-American. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I got him and then I got Don Davidson and Dick Snyder and Mike Malloy. And, mm -hmm. But I sold the, the kids on coming to a small school. We didn't have a 900 boys. Mm. In fact, there was something in the paper last year about uh, Wingate, one of those schools, and it had the smallest student body if anybody got in the NCAAs. Mm -hmm. I said, we went to the final eight and had 900 men. Mm. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, that's what I sold them on. It's just, and, and I believed, you know, I was cocky and I believed I could beat anybody, you know. I guess, I don't know, but. Hmm. How many scholarships did you have back in those days? I didn't, everybody else had 15. You look at my teams up here, I had 11. Mm -hmm. And, um, but eventually after we started winning big time and getting in the top 10, I, I went up to 15. Mm -hmm. But when I started, I didn't have but 11. Mm -hmm. Who were some of the great players that, that helped you build that program at Davidson? Well, Fred Hessel was the first mm -hmm. one. And, mm -hmm. You and know, of course, he, you coached his brother at Merle. Yeah, after I left. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. Will. And Will was a good player for us. You yeah, know, for us at Merrill. But Fred was a great player. I mean, he he was the number one pick in the NBA draft when he graduated. But actually, it did it a little bit different than you had territorial rights. Yes, yes. So the Knicks got Bradley, and and because he was from New York, and, and then I forget it was St. Louis got Hetzel second. Yes. So, and then Dick Snyder was a great player there, and Don Davidson, mm -hmm. and Terry Holland was a heck of a right. player for me. He went on and played he for the you country in and... uh, field goal percentage, Jerry Crow and Mike Malloy and, you know, Wayne Huckle, who was a mm -hmm. runner-up for a Rhodes Scholar. Danny Carroll was, a, I coached two Rhodes Scholars, mm -hmm. Danny Carroll and Tom McMillan. Wow. And I should have had three, because Huckle was a straight-A student mean. He was from Clifton, New Jersey. I mean, mm -hmm. he used to have to wear sliding pads because he was on the floor so much. Mm -hmm. He'd get big strawberries on his hips. But he he applied for, he was a finalist for a Rhodes Scholarship. But the guy, the professor that helped Davidson students get Rhodes Scholars told him to apply in New Jersey, which he was from. And he had another kid on the track team that was from North Carolina. He told him to reply from North Carolina. I told Wayne, I said, Wayne, go back and tell that guy, you want to be from North Carolina, the heck were you better than that guy? Well, you know, that guy won it. Mm -hmm. and, and Wayne, I'm sure, would have won it had he, you know, applied through North Carolina rather than New Jersey, because he got all of Princeton, Harvard, Yale yeah. people and competed. But he was still a finalist. Coach, they tell a, a legendary story that when you were Davidson out recruiting, you used to drive an old station wagon, and they and and the 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 the, the old story says you used to sleep in the station wagon. You used to have a pistol with you. That's true. Well, see, when I first got to Davidson, I mean, mm -hmm. wasn't a highly sought after job. Yeah. So I had five hundred dollars to recruit on. Woo! Five hundred. I said, you're recruiting. You know, you, we're gonna pay you six thousand, and. Uh, got five hundred dollars to recruit on. Mm -hmm. Well you know me, I spent that in the first month. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I had these doctors that were giving me money mm -hmm. and, and um, let me use it. Like Dr. McLeod lived in Somerset, Kentucky and I'd fly to Kentucky to his place. He'd give me his credit card and his Buick and I'd drive all up through Indiana and mm -hmm. Kentucky and, and um, so uh, when I drove anywhere I drove in an old station wagon mm -hmm. that the school owned, mm -hmm. and I used to sleep in it. In fact, when I took Fred Hetzel out, when he told me he was coming, right, mm -hmm. I said, let's go to dinner tonight, right? So we, he picked some fancy restaurant there in D.C. We go in there, and I hit my wallet. I didn't have enough money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I didn't have credit cards back then. So I said, Mr. Hetzel, can you lend me some money? I'll pay you back, you know, as soon as I get back to school. So I didn't, I didn't have enough money to pay for the meal. I used to drink <laughs> Like you and I was always yeah. trying to weight, lose weight, so I would drink Metrical. Yeah. I would go out and say, y'all get a steak, whatever you want, but I'm on a strict diet, I got to drink his Metrical. We're saving me money, see. And um, so I did sleep, and in fact, the night that I signed Fred, I didn't have any money. And I never stayed in motels anyway, so I, I, I used to pull up in a filling station, and I, you know, it was a, uh, what kind of car, you know, a, 
Chevy. Yeah, it was a van, not oh, a van. van. A van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I kept a mattress in the back of it and, mm -hmm. and, and slept. And I had my daddy's pistol, which I never fired or anything, but I used to put that underneath my pillow. Mm -hmm. And then I'd wake up in the morning and go in the bathroom and shave in, in the filling station. And I even did that the night I signed Fred mm -hmm. <laughs> up in D.C. I was a little scared up there in D.C. Yeah. But uh, you know, they, they, used to do they that. tell the other story that 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 they, they used to tell on you was that that in those days, because you didn't have much money to recruit, you'd show up at at the prospect's house right around dinner time because you knew that the, <laughs> the, the, the mom was going to say, "Oh, coach, you want to have dinner with us?" <laughs> well, I don't know if that's true. I, I did eat over. You know, back then, George, you could uh, you could take a, a, a recruit out to eat. You could take his mother and oh, dad. Yeah, no, we didn't have all these Most of the time, like they would that, invite man. all the uncles and aunts. And yeah. I'd go out, sometimes there'd be 15 people there. <laughs> you know, and so I was drinking my metric cow and they were eating. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that now, but you used to back then. Uh, what was the most difficult part about recruiting players for Davidson? I mean, I don't think it was that difficult. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think it was easier than Maryland. Because at Maryland, we could get, you know, Moses Malone in school wasn't a mm -hmm. great student, but a mm -hmm. super guy. I and mean, we could get you about anybody in school that we wanted to. Mm -hmm. At Davidson, they had to have a thousand on the SAT, they had to have a B average. Mm -hmm. So it eliminated a lot of guys. Mm -hmm. You know, like Fred Hessel was a, a good student. His mother wanted him to go to an Ivy League school. That's where she wanted him to go. Mm -hmm. But I talked her into, uh, you know, you go free to Davidson. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Dick Snyder was a great football player. He didn't have any basketball scholarship. He was from Ohio, right? Yeah, he was from yeah. Canton, Ohio, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Don Davidson, a kid that I had from Salem, Ohio, his dad recommended Dick to me. Mm -hmm. And, um, in fact, the day he signed with me, Moose Krause, the football Coach at uh, Notre Dame. At Notre Dame with the athlete director. I forget what he He's was. A, he was the AD. Yeah, he was a, He was over there trying to get him aside with Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. But Dick said, I just, I knew I could play football. He, he gained more yards than any quarterback in the United States, a high school quarterback. He said, I knew I could play football in college, and I liked basketball. I want to prove to myself I could play basketball, and he did. Mm -hmm. you know, he scored over 10,000 points in the NBA, and great defensive player. So, you know, and Jerry Crow, another good player I recruited, you know, and Charlie Scott, those guys came along. We were already in the top ten, mm -hmm. and people wanted to come to Maryland. Mm -hmm. So we were able to recruit some of the best players in the country because mm -hmm. we were a small school, a good academic school, and we were in the top ten. And talking about being in the top ten, Coach, you took a, a, a program from its infancy and put it in the top 25 on a continual basis, in the top 10, we, we could realistically say. So now you've got this program that you've, you've taken from the dead and resurrected it. And so wh what made you decide to leave Davidson and go and take another program and resurrect that from the dead? Because Merlin hadn't won a game of marbles before you got there. Well, you know what happened? I was over there watching Maryland play, because Will, Fred's brother, mm -hmm. played it at Maryland. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting with Mr. Hetzel, mm -hmm. Fred's dad, and, and Will's dad. And there was nobody in the cold field. I had probably a thousand people in there. And he said, they left, you know, it's a job you ought to have. He said, you fill this place up up in D.C., you'd be great for this. Mm -hmm. And I never, I didn't, I didn't even pay attention to mm -hmm. it, really, because I had great teams at Davidson. But then when uh, we went up there, and so Jack Heisey, who you know, mm -hmm. uh, helped recruit you to, for me, mm -hmm. uh, he called me up one day in my last year at Davidson. Mm -hmm. We ended up 27-3. And, mm -hmm. and Charlie Scott beat the shot, made the shot at yeah, him, yeah. that beat us. beat us. So he came, he called me and said, I want you to just come up here and talk to Coach Kehoe about this job when the season's over. And I said, look, man, we're right in the NCAA playoffs. I'm not going to talk to you now. I said, when the NCAA playoffs are over, I'll talk to you. And we went to the final eight, and Charlie beat us on the last mm -hmm. second shot. So when the game was over, 
Keo came in and he said, come on, come on, come on, come on my house, I want to talk to you. I said, Coach, I just, I just got knocked out of the final four on the last second shot. I don't feel like talking. Oh, yeah, come on, come on. So, so you and George come on over my house. And I had never met Keo, I had met Heisen. Mm -hmm. So we went, we went over his house and he started talking to me about, look, mm -hmm. Davis is a real small town, you need to be up here in the nation's capital. We got Ted Williams coaching baseball in the, in the spring and the summer. Mm -hmm. We got Vince Lombardi coaching football during football season, and we want you up here coaching in the in the winter time with basketball. Mm -hmm. Now you three be the y'all. You three would own this town, you know. Mm -hmm. and that, I mean, that kind of struck me, you know. I guess, and but I had always seen that bigger. See, when we played in when I was in Davidson, we played in the Charlotte Coliseum. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, which was 20, 20 miles from Davidson, so we had to get in cars and drive to the games. Where well, our Cold Field House was the, <clears throat> the largest field house in the country at the time. Mm -hmm. In fact, he had the Final Four there two times, and um, so I just, you know, he kind of talked me into it, mm -hmm. and, and um, so he said, "Well, look, I'm gonna tell you what, you and Joyce go downstairs." And talk about this. I don't care. I, I'll wait up as long as you wait and want. And because if you're not going to take it, I'm going to offer it to Morgan Wooten tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. So we got there and talked to about two or three o'clock in the morning. I said, "Let's do it." Which I was, you know, I had Mike Malloy coming back. Mm -hmm. I had three starters coming back from that 20, 27 and three team, mm -hmm. and, and we ended up third in the country in the final poll. Mm -hmm. So it was a hard decision, but. I just, it was like a challenge, you know, being up in the D.C. area and uh, having a big field house to play and I didn't have to mm -hmm. drive 20 miles to get there and 